So what have we learned since March 2020? We've learned that we live under a system of corporate governance, not a democracy, a system that has been designed so that citizens of this country cannot counter it. We have learned that it is okay to protest during a lockdown as long as you are protesting against something like climate change. It's not okay to protest during a lockdown if it's against a lockdown. We've learned that it's okay for our government leaders, those who are making all of the decisions, changing the laws and directing us on how we are to live our lives, that they do not need to answer our questions, genuine questions. These people continue to display disdain and disregard for those they are supposed to represent. They take very few questions from the public and when they do, they reply with, I don't recall or I'll have to get back to you. They deflect and they insult those asking important questions. They take a condescending tone, a tone that one would perhaps use when you're at your wit's end with somebody who's being unreasonable or ridiculous. And we've learned that the government's spending $1 billion a week in the name of this issue since March 2020 cannot be called into question. There has never been any public consultation and public debate has become non-existent. It has become unreasonable in the eyes of the government media establishment for any citizen to question how the country's money has been spent continuously now for over 90 weeks. And that's whilst we slip into debt that can never be repaid, not only in our lifetime, but in the generations of those that haven't even been born yet. We have learned that censorship is acceptable when it comes to questioning the government, the media, the pharmaceutical companies and the virus. It's not socially acceptable anymore to ask questions. It's portrayed by the media as unpopular. It's not acceptable to be concerned about the long-term side effects of a medical treatment that has no long-term safety data, which can only come with time. It's not acceptable to have reservations about taking a medical treatment that they won't provide you with a full list of ingredients. And we're told it's safe and that that just should be enough. You know, we're told that they cannot provide a full list of ingredients and that's due to intellectual property laws. And we should just trust that everything in it is safe for us, that there's no conflicts with any medications that we take. And yet, on the other hand, we're being told that it's the largest medical trial in the world because it's not fully approved and they only have provisional approval under emergency use because our leaders have put us under a state of emergency now for almost two years and without that state of emergency they wouldn't be able to administer the treatment legally so you know it would need to actually wait um, for actual full approval um, after long-term safety data has been provided and established and all of that for it to be deemed approved correctly with due process our own Prime Minister said that he would never make this mandatory and that's it's up to each individual to make their own choice about it and it sounded fair but then our Prime Minister who is supposed to uphold the Constitution and make sure that his state leaders don't make laws that conflict with the Australian Constitution um, he allowed those state members to mandate them for employment and it's underhandedly the most passive aggressive approach that one can take. You know, on one hand they say it's your choice and you know, but if, if you don't do it, then your state leader, um, you know, will take away your right to feed yourself and keep a roof over your head. And um, you know, is that a choice? You know, to me that's blackmail. So the choice isn't really between you taking it or you're not taking it you know the choice is really between you know you take it um, or you lose your livelihood um, you know it will be taken away and to me that just sounds like punishment and then to hear the Prime Minister say recently that um, you know if you did take it and you died or you had an adverse reaction then it was your choice to take it so to top that off whilst all of this is keeping us busy and this is really important, um, you know, there are laws that are being made, amended, passed, 
um, that further strips us of our human rights, choices, freedom, privacy. And for those who took the medical treatment and didn't ask questions, you know, they weighed up the risk versus benefit and they said, I'm going to do this. That's great. I hope it turns out for you. I hope it is safe because we know already that the effectiveness is not what they promised. And regardless of that, um, you know, regardless of your status, because that's not my business, it's yours. And regardless of whether you accept showing your medical status via an app, um, you know, whether that's to keep your employment or grant you access into places, you know, restaurants, bars, cafes, whatnot. If you're okay with showing that, you know, good for you, no worries. Um, but let that be where you draw the line because we really need to put our differences aside right now and we need not to allow other people's choices divide us um, because you know while we're being divided major changes are actually you know happening to our civil liberties and our human rights you know they're being decided right now and it doesn't look good and if we don't start paying attention right now then there may be no <clears throat> turning back you know for a future that nobody wants and I'm sure that most people don't want to live under a system that, you know, is governed by something much worse than communism. And unfortunately, we are fast heading in that direction, you know, towards a total, you know, totalitarian, technocratic world, you know. And, you know, if you don't want Australia to be a part of the new world order, then now is the time, if you don't already know what it is, to find out what it is and actually, you know, look at the laws that are being passed right now and speak to family and friends who can point you in the right direction if they're educated on it um you know because the policies that are going on you know right now and being passed you know they're going to forever change your life well you'll never go back to prior to march 2020 and you know just some for example there's the biosecurity act 2015 um, all of the amendments that have been made to that, you know, since 2020, there's, you know, more than a handful. Um, look at the a digital identity legislation that's almost passed. It's currently in phase three, which is actually a public consultation phase, um, which sounds great. Oh, we get to have a say, but yet they're not, you know, um, you know, advertising that or letting people know that they can have their say. And you've only got to the 27th of October to actually do that. So, you know, um, there's also um, other laws that have been rushed through, which it's, you know, too late. Um, basically, there's a um, law which allows security agencies in Australia to access Australians' online accounts and emails. And it's called the Identity and Disrupt Bill 2021. And it gives these agencies the power to access and read your emails and your private messages. And it doesn't stop there. Like they can also add, copy, alter, delete data held in your computer. And, you know, it, it doesn't even stop there. Um, you know, they can actually take over your online accounts and um, you only actually need to be suspected of a crime for them to do this. You, it, It's ridiculous. It's very low level what they need. But anyway, to end this video, I want to read a quote from a recent article in The Spectator by Alexandra Marshall which I think is very pertinent. She says, our government has used this situation as an excuse to turn Australians into digital products. It is the perfect scam. Cash is an inconvenience to a government desperate to reduce your freedom. Engagement with technology should not be a requirement to exist. Australians instinctively understand the horror of China's social credit system, but remain incapable of recognizing the bars on our own cage. Make no mistake, Digital passports are a domestic social credit system that denies rights based upon compliance in the hope that you will obey rather than exercising your democratic right to exist. We are not witnessing a casual overreach of power. Digital passports and QR check-ins are a complete abandonment of the Western democratic system. They are a threat to our children and the survival of Australia as we know it. Big tech companies have always had access to our data, but on their own, they are powerless to harm us. The recent collusion between big corporations and government presents an immediate risk to our safety. 
If we do not stop this, we will lose everything that makes us Australian.